started my real estate photography business 10 years ago, and the first five years I made pretty much every mistake in the book, and it took me a lot longer to grow than it should have if I would have just known. So this video is helping you learn in 20 minutes what took me five years to learn, so that way you can start shooting real estate more successfully and not make all the beginner mistakes that I made. We're gonna be going over the 20 things that I wish I knew, starting with number one, as silly as this sounds, use a tripod. A lot of people, when they first start shooting real estate, they handhold it, go up into the corner and shoot down on the room. You absolutely don't wanna do that. Get your camera on a tripod. It's gonna help you get much better results. And number two, make sure that your verticals are straight. And this is why we use a tripod, because if you go to the corner of the room and you shoot down on the room, the vertical lines in the room, what we call verticals as a real estate photographer, form like a V shape or like an A shape and they look awful. And so you want your verticals to be straight, those vertical lines in the images to be up and down. And you do that on a tripod. And a lot of people will either use a ball head or a geared head tripod to accomplish that. If you wanna see the exact gear I recommend, check the link below for my full gear kit. Number three, do not waste your time with flash. It is not worth learning. I know that may cause some controversy, but it is absolutely true. In today's world, you do not need to use a flash to get awesome results. None of the photos for the last eight years at my business have been shot with a flash. Our business continues to grow and our photos are awesome. There's much better editing techniques today called HDR, but not just normal HDR, it's called hand blended HDR, and that's what you wanna do as a real estate photographer, so ditch the flash, you don't need it, and if you wanna learn more about that type of editing we do, check out my channel, because I posted a video on that topic specifically. Number four, make sure you're shooting with a wide enough lens. One of the biggest rookie mistakes is shooting with a lens that does not go wide enough, and the quick hint is the kit lens that came with your camera is not wide enough. If you have a full frame camera, you're gonna to wanna to shoot with a 16 to something or somewhere around 16 at the widest. If you're using a cheaper crop sensor camera, you're gonna want a 10 to 20 or 11 to 22 or something where the widest is around 10 or 11 millimeters. Any more zoomed in than that for each different type of sensor and your photos are not gonna be wide enough and your clients are not gonna like the results. Next, do not overspend on gear. Once your camera is good enough, it's not gonna make any difference if you upgrade and waste the money. I, at my photo business, switched all of my photography photographers to the pretty cheap entry level EOS M50 made by Canon and we didn't see any worse results than using a more expensive camera like this EOS R. So don't overspend on gear. Get any camera really made in the last 10 years. Make sure your lens is wide enough you're good to go. Next is hire an editor. Do not do it yourself. Not only are your results not gonna be as good because you'll be new to editing, it's gonna take you a long time to learn how to edit properly. And then even once you learn, a long time editing every night. It's not worth the money. You can outsource it and get awesome photos for about a dollar per image. Next is use good software to run your business. We use a business management software for real estate photographers called HD Photo Hub that manages everything for us. Our invoicing, our delivery, our scheduling, everything is done within that one software and it's really affordable for everything you get. I have that link below, you can check it out, but it is an awesome software. So whatever you do, have something that helps you run your business where you're not manually doing everything. When we first started, we'd like send invoices in one software and schedule in a different software and deliver in a different, it was a mess. So get it all in one. I wish I knew sooner about software like HD Photo Hub. Next, sell your service, not your photos. I think it's really easy as a photographer to think that the only thing your clients are hiring you to do is shoot photos. Well, that's technically true. How you interact with their sellers, how convenient you are to work with, how booked out you are, how fast your turnaround time is, and all the little things that you do to provide a better experience matter a lot more than the photos themselves. And a lot of real estate photographers get tripped up because they spend way too much time on the photos, not enough time on the service that their business actually provides, that thing that makes the agent's life easier, all those things you do that make the agent's life easier. So really focus on that, that's how you grow a big business. Focusing on photo quality is a dead end and absolutely not a good use of time. Next, and this kind of tags off the last one, but don't have stupid policies. There's a lot of photographers that, you know, they charge late fees if the agent's late, or if the agent has to reschedule last minute, they charge a fee, or just these other little things that don't really help. And I understand why photographers charge them. It's in order to protect them. But one thing you'll find quickly, especially in a business like real estate photography, is the better you are to work with, and the more you put your clients first, the bigger your business will get. And so I think oftentimes charging little fees like that and just being a pain to work with because of your policies, it's a really stupid move. I'll give you a good example. We had a shoot at Norman & Young where the client booked us to come out. And while we were shooting the house, it was a new construction. The AC wasn't on yet, so it was kind of hot. And our photographer mentioned something about it being kind of hot. And the agent said, you wouldn't believe what happened. I actually hired X competitor, one of our companies that I'm not gonna name, that's a competitor in our area. 
and they wouldn't go in the house and shoot because the AC wasn't on. And I get it, it was kind of hot in there, it was a 90 degree day in Texas, but come on, like that's not the agent's fault if the AC unit hasn't been installed. And you know, there's plenty of jobs where you have to work outside and you're shooting the house outside. So just be easy to work with, don't do stuff like that because as you saw in that case, literally they just called us and that person has been a client ever since then and probably has referred us. And so that one interaction where the photographer didn't wanna go in because the house was hot, as stupid as that is, cost them a client long-term. Next is get Supra access if it's available in your area. In the United States, most of the lockboxes that agents use are all a standardized lockbox that's electronically accessible made by a company called Supra. And in some markets, you can get the key, the same key that agents use to open that lockbox. And if you are able to do that, your clients will absolutely love it. So check with your local real estate association, see if photographers are able to get Supra access. And if they say no, don't stop there. Ask some of your other agents, see if other photographers they work with have had access in the past, because a lot of times you just need to talk to the right person and then they'll give you access. That's exactly what happened with us. They said no at first. We talked to one of our bigger clients who happened to be on the board at that time and they gave us super access and we've had it for six, seven years since then. So if you can get super access or whatever the electronic lockbox, the standardized one that agents use in your area, definitely do it. It will make you so much more convenient to work with because the agent doesn't have to go out there to let you in. And when the agent doesn't show up, you can shoot so much faster, so it's a win-win. Next, get your drone license as fast as possible. A lot of people think this is this big complex thing and the reality is it's not that hard of a test. New employees at my business, their first day is spent studying for that test and most of them, or at least the quickest 50%, go actually take the test the next day and usually pass. So it's at max a three-day thing and I think we've seen a lot of people put it out there as like this hard thing, they have to go get their pilot License. It's not at all that. It's a simple knowledge test and it's really easy to do. So don't sleep on that because having your drone license not only will make you more money per shoot because a lot of agents will want drone photos, but it will open you up to more clients because a lot of real estate agents want a photographer who can do everything and sort of be an all-in-one solution. So go get your drone license. Don't make a big deal out of it. Next, focus on volume and not luxury. A lot of real estate photographers think that shooting those luxury 10 plus million dollar homes is the end goal. And if you want to make money, at least that is not a very good end goal because not only are there few of those homes you don't get paid that much more to shoot them and they take forever and so my business model has always been to focus on the middle 80 percent of homes not the cheapest 10 percent or the most expensive 10 percent but those middle 80 percent are the ones that are constantly selling it's easy to get four or five shoots a day it's consistent and they're easy to shoot and that's how you build an awesome real estate photo business I think a lot of photographers just think that the natural end goal is shooting those expensive homes, but the money is not there. And I think that's because most people wanna move there, right? And anywhere a lot of people wanna be, you're competing with other photographers, driving the price down, and also having to compete with more photographers. So focus on volume. That's how you make your money in this business. Next, you wanna make sure you're priced within the market rate. A lot of photographers get advice, which is you need to charge your worth and you need to be premium. And I understand that. And there is a time for that. But if you want to get a lot of real estate photo jobs, you need to be within the market price. Now, here's the truth about it. When I say be in the market price, a lot of people think I mean undercut all the competition. Don't do that, that's a losing formula. What I'm saying is find the market price of those real estate photography companies that actually do high volume and be within the top 50% of the pricing. What I'm saying here is that you don't wanna be two or three times the price because you just simply won't get the business. Real estate photography is kind of a commoditized industry, meaning there is a market price. And so if you're able to price within that and then make sure your services are profitable within that price constraint that your agents wanna pay, you'll be so much more successful. There's a lot of photographers kind of going back to that luxury point that I made where they try to price for that high-end stuff and like it doesn't work. It's not the best way to make money. And so at least for me, I'm trying to build the biggest business possible and make the most money as a photographer. So I have to look at what actually does that. And while my invoices might be a little lower when I'm not shooting that luxury stuff, it's really easy to shoot like three, four or five homes a day. And that adds up pretty significantly, especially if your average order value is three or $400. Next is one of the biggest and most important ones that I can possibly hope to have you understand, which is do not be a perfectionist. So many of the photographers that I work with that get stuck at three or four grand a month shooting real estate and can't possibly shoot anymore are spending way too much time at each shoot and, and way too much time just checking their editor's work when they get the photos back. Do not be a perfectionist. You wanna get your photos to that 80 or 90% and then that is good enough. The 80-20 rule very much applies here. 
80% of your results are gonna come from 20% of your effort, so don't spend a ton of time trying to get that last 20%. It is a losing formula. You gotta move on to the next shoot. This is a volume game, three, four, five shoots a day, and you don't do that by spending four hours at each shoot and three hours editing. You can't. Next is to actually work on building a relationship with your clients. In this business, you don't need that many clients to have an awesome business because they keep using you over and over again. And so it is definitely in your best interest to build as solid of a relationship with them as possible because not only is that gonna make sure they stay around, it's also gonna make sure that you have the easiest and most enjoyable time working with someone who you're gonna have to work with very often. So think about everything you can do to maximize that relationship. Earlier in the video, I talked about don't charge annoying fees and have these awful policies. That's one aspect, but there are a bunch of other things you can do to build a genuine relationship with your client. And if you do that, not only are they gonna keep working with you for a while, they're also gonna refer you a ton. We have clients in my photo business that have been with us since effectively day one 10 years ago, and they've continued to use us for every single listing they get over that last 10 years, and that adds up to a really large amount of money over time. You only get that if you build a solid relationship that's able to stand the test of time, and here's the truth. You do that by actually caring about your clients. I think a lot of people just look at it transactionally, they try to get the most for themselves, there's this idea in photography that we're being taken advantage of, and I think the, that idea, and then having photographers believe that, is where they actually get taken advantage of, but it's getting taken advantage of by themselves because of their false beliefs. So you're not getting taken advantage of. Focus on maximizing the relationship you have with your client and you will do the opposite of get taken advantage of, which is you'll be able to build an awesome business and get a ton of referrals and have fun and get to know people as you build your business. And lastly, keep it simple. I know so many photographers that have the most wildly complex pricing and pricing structure. They go off square footage and there's nine different packages and three different tiers and nobody likes that when they work with a business who does that. It's very complicated. I never know how much I'm gonna pay if I work with the business like that and it even makes it harder to refer you because if you're talking to someone let's imagine one of your clients is having a referral conversation they're like yeah you should totally use John and they're like well how much is it for a shoot and they're like nah, 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 I don't know kind of this depends on don't do that. There is a saying that the confused mind never buys and I think it's important to keep that in mind here and maximize the efficiency and clarity of your packages and pricing. At Norman & Young, we offer three main packages, Base, Pro, and Plus. They're really easy to understand. There's no square footage pricing. And then we have a bunch of a la carte services. Again, set flat rates, no square footage pricing. It all works itself out and it allows us to have a much more simple pricing structure and ordering workflow. And that is a really big benefit to your business. We've gotten to coach a lot of businesses that don't have that. One of the first things we do is help them implement a more consistent and clear pricing strategy, and that usually helps them significantly grow. With that all being said, one of the most important next steps that you can take if you're either a beginner real estate photographer or want to get into real estate photography is to watch my free workshop linked below. It's an hour long, and it takes you in step-by-step -step order how to get started as a real estate photographer, what gear you'll need, how to shoot, how to see if there's actually opportunity for this in your market, and then how to get clients, which is the most important part. So if you haven't yet, watch that workshop shop and I'll see you in the next video.